must be such you must be such a pro war now at like reading dynamics like that uh, in uh, working situations. Uh, well, that I, I think yes, definitely acquired knowledge. I think it's one of the biggest parts of our our mutual jobs is mm. people skills. Definitely, um, it's um, it's different. I, I have I have learned, and I, I get this feeling from you you guys as well. I've learned that I have to be the same person all the time. There was this when you're young, you get very naive, and you think that you have to show people different sets of different kinds of deference they're like oh this person's famous i have to be you know all submissive and whatever you need and this person yeah they're younger so i can be more tough no i'm the same person i, I think one of the biggest lessons i learned was was as an engineer um working with uh, guys like jack douglas and i and the, the thing about jack douglas is He's not the producer that sits there and like he can, but he's not the guy that sits there and like rewrites every single part and dictates and brings out sheet music and all this kind. Of, I mean, if he wanted to, I know he has all those levels of talent. He's done things from writing hit songs to everything, you know, all, everything. So I know he can do that. His skill is the fact that everybody in the room feels important. He doesn't make the bass player or the drummer feel any less important than the world famous lead guitar player or lead singer. Everybody's ideas are welcome. And he always creates a wonderful environment. And I remember we were in Boston with Aerosmith for three months, and then we come back to LA, and we're like six, nine months here. I can't remember. Six months and my, my big studio, and then three months in this small studio here, mixing, doing overdubs and vocals and all that stuff. And I remember about halfway through the process, I suddenly dawned on me. Steven Tyler was working at uh, American Idol from like 10 a.m. till 7 p.m. every day. He would... Sorry, no, it's like 12 till 7. And sometimes he'd show up at the studio at 10 a.m. and want to work for an hour or two before running to American Idol. They need to work in American Idol all day, have to be on the whole day. Yeah, you know, be all on and like on it the whole time. Then he'd come back to the studio. He'd eat the catering at American Idol. Wouldn't go for dinner. He'd come to the studio half an hour afterwards. He'd be in the studio working sometimes till 2 o'clock in the morning and then come back in at 10 a.m. And he did this for six days a week while he was filming American Idol, while he was doing, he'd go for rehearsals, he'd be on. And so he was doing these like 18 hour days and he was probably 62, 63, 64, something like that. And I remember I'm, I'm watching this happen for two or three weeks. And then I was like, shit, he came in at 10 a.m. and sang and he was singing at 1 a.m. the night before. And so it's like 11.30, he's just about to leave. You know, he's just finishing up his last, last vocal take. And I just sort of leaned in on the talk back, and this is what I learned from being with Jack, and said, that was really good. You did, a, you did great work. And last night, those vocals, the comp sounded fantastic. And he just had this big grin and said, thanks, man, and left. And I just dawned on me. The guy is like the, one of the most famous rock singers in the world. And nobody ever says to him genuinely that you did a good job because it's all like, well, he's untouchable. He's a genius. I don't need to flatter his ego. No, he's a freaking human being, just like all us three. A crew member comes up to you, has seen every single guitar player ever work with either, you know, with either Brian Ferry or Chris Cornell and comes up to you and says, wow, what a great set. I bet you it means more than anything else because you know that that guy who's like taking care of drums for, you know, for that band for the last 10 years, just noticed that you did something great. It means something. And I think that that's what we forget that, you know, that's one of the biggest takeaways from working with somebody like Jack Douglas for me is the fact that I realized that we're all human beings. None of us, even though some of us are self-appointed, none of us are actually experts. We're learning every single day. We flying by the sea of our pants, making it up as we go, hoping for the best. You know what I mean? You know, you, um, you make an interesting point because you, you, you started off your point by saying that you don't treat um, the rock stars yep. and, the, and then maybe the, you know, a hired, you know, a, a crew member or, or a musician that's hired or something any different. Um, yep. And a lot of people might take that as to mean like, oh, well, I'm not going to give the rock stars this preferential treatment. But you actually kind of no. turned it around and said, like, yep. I like to, uh, which I, f I find really, uh, really a cool thing. I mean, th you know, the fact that you would, they need praise and to know when they did a good job as well. Uh, they're not this untouchable, like, oh, they just know that yep. they're, you know. That, so that's that's really great. It's great to, a point to remember that. You know, and that's part happens. of being human. And then what too. happens is when you do give them advice, they believe you. 
Because if you're running around going, oh, you're a god of everything. I, I, I was blessed uh, years ago um, to meet Jeff Beck, and I went over to his house and hung out with him and jammed. It was like one of my biggest experiences in my life. And, and it was in 99, 2000. So it was at a period where I was in bands and I was coming out the other side and I didn't know whether I was going to stay in music. I was young enough to go. I was thinking about going back to law school and getting a degree and becoming a lawyer and that, you know, I, I always wanted, I was thinking of doing that. And then I'm thinking to myself, do I want to do that? Or do I want to stay in music? I want a good life. I want to provide for a family. You know, I wasn't married at the time, but you know what I mean? I wanted a good life. So I either had to up my game in music or I had to, um, you know, I, I, I had to just change direction and, and go and do something at a higher level. Um, you know, educate myself more to get, to make more money that way. And I met Jeff Beck and I just walked away. All the stereotypes were gone. Every idea I'd had about ego and everything. He was just a guy and hanging out and we were swapping riffs. And yes, he's arguably the greatest guitar player in the world, you know, but I still walked out of it going, wow, that was so amazing. And he talked to me like a regular human being and I was, I felt relaxed. I didn't feel like I had to be like, oh my God, you're amazing. You know, even though obviously he, he is and I feel that way it's it's those kind of experiences where you get to meet truly amazing people and you see the humility in them and then it teaches you how to treat people because how else would I know like unless you le meet a, a leader in our field and see just how humble and normal they are you don't really you know, you know what I mean and it broke down all the stereotypes because I'd heard all these things you know they read all these stories from as a kid that like Jeff Beck was like this massive like you know you know terrible uh, terrible kind of leader and stuff and no I kind of got the opposite and then I started looking at it from a perspective like Frank Zappa Jeff Beck Miles Davis um you know these guys that if you were in a, their bands you went on to do great things because they chose the best players, they had the best arrangements. You, you know what I mean? I, there's Meralda and I, Michael Walden, at like a teenager, early twenties, playing drums on Wired, went off to be one of the biggest, if not top ten, producers in the eighties and songwriter. Whitney Houston, all of this stuff, he was producing all those tracks. You know, and and you see like how really great people that we get to work with can empower us and lift oh, us yeah. up and focus us. Oh man, I find that, I mean, the personalities, totally. I have a, a dual kind of, because uh, I get, I, I, I find them addictive kind of, like, because he's a g g sort of, you know, high functioning, really creative personality. Somebody like Steven, uh, uh, like you, you were mentioning, you know, pretty fascinating guy to hang out with uh, and, and see work on that level and, you know, the amount of time, like, I find that addictive, you know, somebody that would work 17 hours a day at, at that stage. And I like to be around that energy and just kind of, mm -hmm. and then at the same time, it's at this point in my life, um, I, I also, because there's, a, there's the, the flip side and there can be, I'm not saying him in particular, I'm just saying with, with, with many of these personalities, there's sort of the dark side of it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, and I, and oh, I yeah. find it like yeah. that as, as I'm getting older, that the kind of like that rock star on a pedestal um, personality and the, I, I, I'm sort of, I'm finding it a little bit, uh, I don't want to say, tedious or something but it can be you know it's great to have that i mean it's the it's the skill of like what what you're touching on warren i think of like treating them as a human being on that same human level giving them praise where praise is due but also letting them know when and that's the skill of a record producer i mean letting them know honestly when you think something could be better or whatever then you can ride that line and kind of keep it on that good level because if you maybe as a side man you play a more differential sort of role and and at times it can be um draining on your uh, like on your psyche it can be a little you know there's a lot of narcissism and stuff out there in the world right and it can get yeah it can get a little yeah. like be, be a little bit of an emotional vacuum where you feel like yourself getting drained with some of these personalities you know so it's like and and um so it's a, it's a balancing act i think that's all you know is is to is to keep it real and luckily most of the people i've worked with that felt like have been really wonderful um in that way, uh, you know, even folks that might have a think, reputation for being, I've had some great I think most people, most people want to be treated like humans anyway, you know, even, you know, they don't want you to put them up on, and because the moment that you uh, treat them like with some kind of weird filter that is not the authentic you, yeah, that's, that, 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 that's, that's already like, like a, a, a bad start, start for having like a meaningful interaction, interaction with anybody, anybody, isn't it? So, so it's like, you know, the more that one is able to, 
to like to to just speak from human to human uh it, it usually produces a better result even if somebody is super famous uh, but it's, it's See, hard, the, you know, it's not always easy to just like completely uh, switch off all of the, oh my God, oh my God, this this person in your head, you know. Uh, um, but but I find that in my experience anyway, the more, the better, the more I'm focused on being authentically me or, or like being, not being like, oh, this person is such and such and oh, he's done this and he's done that or whatever, you know, the, the, the more I'm able to not think about that and just uh, th- remember that it's a human to human interaction, the more meaningful everything becomes. <laughs> 